LaMelo Ball was special in their win against the Milwaukee Bucks. Can the Hornets make it two in a row against Milwaukee tonight at the Spectrum Center? And yeah, we give you a B-suit update. It's all today on the Locked On Hornets podcast. You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. In a minute, cuz we live. We live. We It's Locked On Hornets. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Local experts on the number one daily sports podcast network. Thanks for making Locked On Hornets your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Walker Mail, Doug Branson, LOH, and you can find the show handle on Twitter at Locked On Hornets. It's exactly where you can find us on YouTube. I imagine a lot of you have already done that, typed in Locked On Hornets and subscribed. Doug, I learned very quickly this weekend that if you give people a reason to come subscribe to the point where you are going to get embarrassed, then people will follow that because we very much so surpassed the 500 uh, subscriber mark that we needed to wear these B suit, these B costumes that look totally, totally ridiculous. And so we were, we were like seven short. Now we're at like 550. I, you guys want to see us embarrassed on this show. It was it was overwhelming. Uh, we we were stuck on four hundred for a while, and then we talked about the bee suits, uh, and people just flooded. And I think that shows that our audience loves us. Uh, I think when you love someone, you want to you feel it's it's an intimacy thing. You you feel comfortable seeing them uh, embarrassed, and yeah. So tomorrow, I guess, so my suit comes today. Yeah, uh, with some shipping delays due to some snow that we had in Nashville. So I think we'll we'll do this tomorrow, right? So, <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to. I All bought right, it tomorrow. I, mean, I have to wear it now. It's, it's purchased. It's it's here. Like it came actually yesterday. What's hilarious is having it on my computer screen. Look, that guy that's wearing it is ridiculous. So yep. you put up the picture on Twitter. He's like this. Why is yep. he happy? Why is he running? Do bees run? I don't. I don't know why he's doing this. Why he felt the need to do that in the costume. And I pressed purchase on that. I think I even went by now. I didn't even add it to the cart. It it's felt weird. It felt really weird. Uh, the bees, the bees that we cover, run. Yeah, they're they second sure in the do. league in, nice. in pace of that's play. Re- that's really good, Doug. They sure are. And I think when you talk about the uh, player that allows them to run the most, it's Lamelo Ball. Man, watching that game Saturday night, I thought Lamelo Ball was just flat out awesome. I mean. You know, I don't want to come in and say, oh, it's the best game I've ever seen him play. We've seen some really special performances. Goodness gracious, though, Doug. Like, the, immediately, too, when you see the the tapped-out rebound, he tries to get it, tap it to himself, finally gets it, and then we get to the behind-the-back half-court pass on a dime to Mason Plumley, all in the heat when Chris Middleton is trying to get the basketball, too. So not only does he just grab it and secure possession – he immediately passes it behind his back all that distance, again, with 100% accuracy. And Mason, he puts the exclamation point on it with a nice little Mason Plumley reverse dunk. I Play of the year for a guy Whoa. that has a bunch? I'm just, uh, look, I'm asking you, is that the play of the year that we've seen so far? And how much potential does it have to hold up to be play of the year at the end of the season? Disregarding context, not some game-winning shot at the right. end, disregarding Disregarding context, uh, text, coolest thing you've seen for flat out what the play is worth, coolest play of the year so far. Yeah, I can't, I can't off the top of my head think of one. I think I have to declare that the coolest play we've seen, LaMelo Ball. It was the most mind-bending play, and he's had some mind-bending passes this year. But it, but it was one of these that I watched over and over again, even beyond the little tap-out uh, steal that he had. Uh, that that pass behind the back, I just don't understand how he executed that so <laughs> He's in perfectly. the air. He's like pirouetting and still doing it. I, you, you should be dizzy. It's fluid. It's fluid. It's ballet. Yeah. It is performance art. Um, I don't quite understand what we're watching right now, but I'd like to see more of it. And I think you're right. LaMelo Ball will have opportunities late in this season and in the playoffs, knock on wood. Uh, he will have opportunities to beat that play out because of context. Uh, but that that will stand, I think, as the coolest play we've seen this year. I thought LaMelo half-court game was great. 
I thought transition was really good, like it always is. The shot wasn't even falling, really, from the perimeter, only two of no. seven. I mean, it wasn't a disastrous night shooting, but it certainly wasn't one of his strongest. Had some timely ones, had the deep three early on, I believe. But even still, what what fascinates me about the ceiling of one LaMelo ball, it's is the 25-point-a-game score in there somewhere to be had through a full season. And I think that he showcases that when he takes guys off the dribble, crosses you up, breaks your ankles, has the floaters in the paint. And he had that working against Milwaukee where he's able to create his own shot and get into the paint and finish with teardrops. You know, there's this one, it's almost like a a two-foot floater. You know how you're supposed to jump off one foot for the floater, right? He had one of those on the left free throw, the left elbow. You know, two-foot floater. It was weird. And he hits it like he... He's got that part of his game that makes me think, okay, is there a point in his career where he's going to give you 25 a game and still give you the assist, still give you the rebounds? Part of that's going to have to be whether the team asks for that or not because Mm -hmm. Terry Rozier is is that guy that you go to for more so scoring. Gordon is supposed to be. We can get to him maybe later. Not a good shooting night for him. But Terry Rozier – that's kind of the guy that you rely on more. So. I would prefer. I would prefer not to get to him later. Well, that's fine. We don't have. <laughs> if you're to, giving then. me, if you're giving me the choice, I would prefer not. Well, to. then we'll 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 stick all positive. That's fine. But you you get what I'm saying. It's not required of Lamelo to be that guy, and Lamelo still shows you that he can be if need be. Yeah, I mean, I I was really impressed both with uh, Ball's aggressiveness in terms of going to the rim, but then when when the moment was biggest, this was fourth quarter. The uh, Bucks were making a run. They couldn't stop Giannis. Giannis was going to the foul line a thousand times. There was there was nothing they could do about that. Chris Middleton was starting to hit some shots late. They uh, the Bucks reduced the deficit to four, and Lamelo Ball draws the double team attention, or maybe there was a miscommunication between Portis and I believe Wesley Matthews. And Rozier opens up wide open. He get, ball gets the pass to Rozier. Rozier knocks it down to put him up seven and really seal the game. Um, you know, when when Ball saw that matchup with Portis, I think the natural inclination for some guys mm-hmm. is to think, oh, I've got this mismatch, game on the line. Let me do this thing. And instead, he saw the he saw the play beyond the play and got it to Rozier wide open for the three, trusted his guy, and Rozier knocked it down. Uh, just just an amazing yeah. game overall. I, and it really was, and it's funny because here we are talking about the coolest play of the year from LaMelo. It happens right off the bat, and I thought there were a bunch of other really good ones. There's the, there's the one pass in the paint I thought was really hard to fit into the space to get to Kelly Oubre, and he does. It's all, I think Kelly Oubre, if the play, if my memory serves correct, it's him kind of as the second cutter right off the heels of another cutter going through the paint. Boom. Tight window. LaMelo hits it. The alley-oop catches Milwaukee sleeping. I think Bobby Portis was nearest to the rim at that time, and it's Miles Bridges that comes in for a slam. I want to talk about Miles in this game, too. I thought he was just an absolute beast physically. I thought he took it to the Milwaukee Bucks. But LaMelo, there was just so many plays where I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is so special. And I think you could even hear it in Eric Collins voice when he was calling the yeah. game. He would give you some of these, you know, one of just a million awesome passes. And Eric Collins was like, this kid is a stud and he he had a fun game calling that one as well so man it's fun to have him as your star yeah and just kind of zooming out to this game overall I mean this was a very physical game and the Hornets for once this season stepped up to that challenge I I understand that the Milwaukee Bucks were have are missing a lot of their role players it's part of the reason they lost this game because I mean you look at the box score Chris Middleton had a great game Giannis had a great game Bobby Portis had a great game and then essentially they had no one else that they could throw the ball to five bench points Uh, that's it from all all from one yeah so that's why Milwaukee lost but why the Charlotte Hornets won is because they stepped up to the physical challenge and said, all right, we're not shooting the ball well, but we're not going to let that affect our defense. They hold Milwaukee to 106 points, and we're going to force the ball inside. You saw Bridges do that. You saw Ubre, who had a bad shooting night, get inside, dunk the ball a thousand times. Uh, this, this was a great game for the Hornets. This was the win, Walker, that I've been waiting for from the Hornets. Bad, tough shooting night from some of the guys. Could they step up, play play enough defense, win a tight game that was physical? They did it, 
and it was amazing. Yeah, t- Terry didn't have a bad shooting night, and he got you going. Lamelo stepped up, scoring the yeah, basketball you when you needed. Uh, right. No. Yeah. And Lamelo, what I'm saying is Lamelo uh, stepped up when you needed him the most to score because he had eight assists. Mm-hmm. He only made two threes, but getting into the paint and getting there, you know. With dribbling between his legs a million times and finally catching you, you know, sleeping and then driving right by you. I, I thought it was a great LaMelo game. I thought Terry was good, obviously scoring the basketball. And then I want to praise Miles Bridges here in the upcoming segment to talk about the way that he performed on top of PJ Washington. Just a lot of positive things in this one in that win over the Milwaukee Bucks. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in that plan. It's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar and Maybe even better. All of those candy bars, all of those built bars are covered in 100% chocolate. They're high in protein, they're high in fiber, but they're low in calories and they're low in sugar too. It's weird. I don't know how they're able to do it. And all of the flavors are great. You have the OGs, like just the double chocolate, salted caramel. You have some fruit, like banana with chocolate, orange, raspberry. They're all so good. Go to built.com. Use promo code and get 15. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. We got a couple more things to talk about over this win against the Milwaukee Bucks to see if they can also do it again tonight. That's coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. 